It's been more than 40 years since a military coup overthrew Chile's socialist president, Salvador Allende. General Augusto Pinochet assumed power with a dictatorship that lasted 17 years. The political upheaval in Chile and across the region during this period was examined by editor and journalist Diego Fonseca. His book, Growing Shock, is a compilation of essays looking at Latin America over the past four decades from the perspective of 13 different journalists. I sat down with Diego Fonseca to learn more about it. Diego, how did you come up with the idea for the book? What was your intention? Well, I, I, I always say that I try, as anyone, I mean, try to explain myself what uh, life is. And in this case, partic particularly with Crescera Golpe, I was trying to, to understand what happened with Latin America in the past 40 years, starting with the uh, Coup d'etat in Chile. So I guess the, the idea of the book was trying to see if all what we did, or Latin America did, in the 70s uh, had some, some kind of, of parallel in the present on or what kind of consequences we have now. You've been quoted as saying that Latin America decided to disappear from its past. Can you elaborate? Well, I guess the point is we, we, for, a lot, for a lot of time, uh, except Argentina, who put the, the, the juntas, the, the military, on, on trial. The rest of the countries in Latin America didn't pay much attention to what happened in the 70s. We have brutal dictatorships and uh, because of probably the political balance in every single country, they didn't decide to take things to justice. The other country where things happened similarly to Argentina was Guatemala, and it was very recent. Rios Montt was judge and, and, and he had 80 years uh, uh, given by a tribunal. But the point is, uh, the other countries didn't do much regarding the 70s. Like, um, there is a still a need to put an eye on, on the past and to discover what, what happened in, in, in Latin America in the 70s. Justice still needs to, still needs to, to say something about uh, the 70s in, in the region. Your book includes the writings of several journalists who grew up under dictatorships, various dictatorships across the region. How are their views and experiences similar, and how do they differ? Well, every single country has a uni unique experience. It's very difficult to translate that to a common idea of the region. And I found that when I was writing and, and producing the book. Uh, but I guess what we are seeing as uh, common is that the idea of we have very imperfect democracies in the region, that we still need to work a lot of it. Uh, building strong institutions is key. Our Congress need to work more in, in, in giving people voice. Our parties need to give people real voice to, to their needs. And I guess our governments still need to think that the way to build a democracy is working both with your own people, the people that support you, and that people that dissent from, from, from you. Uh, we are creating sometimes mutual exclusions from the right to the left wing and from the left wing to the right. I guess we need to still understand that democracy is a balance. You've mentioned that Latin America is like a teenager. So does that mean that it needs more adult supervision? Or what does it need to go through before it can be considered an adult? It's funny, it, it, but the, the idea of being a teenager is that you are still a rebel. You do not need uh, an adult supervision. What you need is to know that the war in front of you uh, requires a mature uh, a point of view, a mature perspective of, on, on things. Uh, it's not that you need your daddy uh, all the time working with you or, or telling you what to do. Uh, you know what to do because you, you have talked uh, what a democracy is, what, is, uh, what, what inclusion and inclusion uh, is, uh, and exclusion is. And, but I guess the point is that what you need to, to think is that, well, the, the era of rebellion has, has gone and now it's time to think as, a, as an adult. It's time to think that you are responsible for your own future. Uh, you are responsible for things you have to do with yourself. You've been quoted as saying that justice shouldn't come from retaliation or revenge. But what, in your view, is the proper way to obtain justice? Well, I'm not a uh, part of the justice system, so I guess this is a good question for, peop for people in the justice system. What I think is that 
I mean, being a journalist or just a person, uh, that the way to do justice is to put in the balance what had happened. Uh, you have to deal with facts more than political motivations, I guess. It's going to be there, but we are not uh, a product of a laboratory. We are people. We used to make mistakes, a lot of mistakes. And we have point of view. We have, uh, we, c we, we believe in things. And so, and, and we judge things from that, per for, from our culture, from our prejudice, whatever. And uh, I guess that we ca what we cannot do is to uh, answer to those that made the huge disaster we have in the 70s, creating new disasters now in the 21st century. You depend on the past to build a strong present, and you depend on a strong present to have a future. You don't have these two points, and you're going to have a very, very difficult future. Diego Fonseca, thank you so much for joining us here on America's Now. Thank you.